Next week, the FDA's advisory committee will vote on a potential third COVID-19 vaccine. But a lot of people are wondering if the coronavirus variants could complicate the process. ABC 10 News anchor Derek Stahl is going in depth with one of the scientists on the committee to get answers. Before Johnson & Johnson's one-dose vaccine can begin rolling out nationwide, a group of scientific advisors to the FDA will meet February 26th. Their job is to decide if the vaccine's potential benefits outweigh the potential risks. We've seen this play out now twice before, but this time, advisors have a new variable to consider, the variants. Dr. Mark Sawyer of Rady Children's Hospital is on the committee. In the back of our minds, I think we're all very worried about some of these variant strains, which the vaccines seem not to be as effective. The FDA internally reviewed Moderna's vaccine candidate for 17 days before turning it over to these scientific advisors for a vote. This time, the agency is spending 22 days on Johnson & Johnson's vaccine. One official acknowledged the variants give this data greater complexity. Johnson & Johnson's vaccine was 66% effective overall throughout eight countries, but it dipped to 57% in South Africa, where the tricky B1351 variant now accounts for the vast majority of cases. In the U.S., the vaccine was 72% effective. That's the number Dr. Sawyer expects his fellow advisors will focus on. For the upcoming meeting at the end of this month, we're going to just have to make a recommendation based on what we know today about strains circulating in the United States and whether the Johnson & Johnson vaccine appears to be effective and safe for those strains. As of Sunday, there were just 17 known cases of the South Africa variant in the U.S. There have been more than 1,100 cases of the U.K. variant. Dr. Sawyer expects there will be more discussion about that strain since it's projected to become the dominant version of the coronavirus in the U.S. sometime next month. That may come up at the FDA meeting. What do we know about their vaccine against that variant. And I'm not sure what that data will, will show us or how much data there is, because when they did the vaccine trial, we may not have had very much of that strain circulating. It's really jumped up just in the last one or two months. He says the outside experts may question Johnson & Johnson at the upcoming meeting about how fast the company can develop booster shots against these variants. But he doesn't expect that will ultimately weigh on their decision. The FDA granted emergency use authorizations to the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines one day after their respective scientific advisory meetings. So if that pattern continues, the agency could give Johnson & Johnson the green light on February 27th. Derek Stahl, ABC 10 News. Johnson & Johnson says once it gets emergency authorization from the FDA, it will start shipping doses right away.